Okay, so let's call this finance meeting to order. So um, it's 5.33 and uh, basically tonight, all we're really talking about is um, we wanted, we needed to post it and we wanted to um, talk about the split tax rate versus a single tax rate. Uh, most of us have seen the proposal. Um, Dan did give us a proposal. We, um, I don't know if everyone had a chance. I watched it again on the select board. Um, um, I see Dan is here, Linda is here, and Susan's here. Um, all people that could speak on any questions that we would have. Uh, Carolyn's not coming tonight. Um, she has another commitment. So um, I do see uh, Shardul here. So um, Shardul, um, pretty much we're gonna be open. If you have anything to say, you're welcome to come, just chime in and say it. Um, we are going to uh, just talk about just this. Um, and then I encourage everybody to um, go to the select board meeting on the 17th. I will post for that meeting, but it will be when the select board votes. So all we're doing is um, we're gonna discuss it and we can put in a recommendation and then the uh, select board will be the board that decides um, on how it will go. Um, so um, is there anybody that has questions that would like to chime in and talk to have before in discussion have Dan or Linda or Susan talk about anything that we don't understand or have questions on? Or did everyone have a chance to um, watch the presentation? I watched it. I found it very helpful. Yeah, and going through the slides uh, that Dan sent were helpful as well. All right. So, um, okay. So my, um, I guess I'll, I'll chime in at first. Um, I totally understand where and why we're doing this and what, what's the theory behind it, um, where um, the, the, um, the rates on, or not the rates, but the assessed values on the commercial property look like they're gonna dip down quite a bit. Whereas the, um, so the resident, residential will have to pick up the slack for that. It's gonna be a big hit to residential, but we did give residential a slide, you know, when we, we uh, went down to the $12. Everyone knew that that was a temporary, that was just, um, and that we'd have to make up for that later. But it is gonna be a bigger, much bigger hit to all the residents um, if we don't do a split tax rate. So, um, but I, my, I guess I do have one question to Dan. And my question is, if, is exactly why is it that the assessed value is so low on the commercial property? What is it, what is it that made the commercial property so low? The, the way the DOR requires us to value the property is using the prior 12 month income for the most part for commercial property and a lot of the commercial properties experienced uh i'll leave the hospitality sector out for right now but like the malls well i guess that's got a lot of hospitality in it as well uh they experienced a large rate or super high rate of vacancy and collection loss so not only did they have vacancies but they had people that weren't paying rents. Hospitality, hotels pretty much were almost virtually shut down. Bars were shut down. Restaurants were shut down for a large portion of 2020, which is what we're looking at for right now. So the, the values dropped significantly. Most of those businesses dropped. The, the assessments are going down probably 15 to 25% for this year. And unfortunately, a lot of the value of the commercial value is in those that section. So the, the values overall went down about 10%. Most people went down five to 10, but a lot of the bigger stuff went down 15, 20, or 25. So the, okay. the tax bill has shifted or the tax liability has shifted significantly. So, so a question would be um, such as, some of the box stores that never closed down, 
what was their uh, and the other question would be if the sales do, does everybody give you sales what if they don't how where do you get the sales from do you re, does the does the uh, commercial property hand in those sales to you or do you get them from another place we send out income and expense questionnaires every year and we get those back in we probably get about 40 percent of them back in it's not really the business sales what we're asking for is the rental information how much did they collect in rents what was what were the expenses of owning the property as opposed to the business that's in there the big boxes were were not really touched a lot this year so Target, Walmart, Lowe's, Home Depot, those stop and shop, those values didn't drop much. Okay. Okay. Does anyone else have any questions? Shardul? Um, the, one, of, one of my questions is, is that if all of these other places, well, I, let me just step back first is there's a reason why obviously our valuations went down. We experienced a significant, I'm talking about, uh, this wasn't like 2008 or you know, 2000, you know, this, was, this was an extinction level event for the hospitality industry. You, and it's still, it's, the effect of it is still being felt. We're still not whole to where we were prior to uh, pan the pandemic, and we're not expected to go back to pandemic levels for at least an another year. And during that time last year, we continued to pay all of our assessments. So we paid all, all of the, all of the hotels that we that I know of paid their their uh, property taxes, paid all their occupancy taxes as required. And I don't believe our, our anybody's really delinquent in that. The other question I have is that you're going to go and raise the taxes while we're trying to recover and while we're still not recovering, meaning we're, we're basically even thanks to government support, but we're, we're basically at um, level income or level, pro, you know, zero profit if it was without the, and that was with the support that we received from the, from the government. If, it, if we hadn't received any of that support, we'd still have major losses compared to what we had last year. And going forward, we're dealing with labor shortages. We're dealing with inventory shortages. Most, a lot of hotels, uh, I, I don't know if you guys know, aren't even running at full occupancy. So th there are gonna be ch probably occasions going forward where we're going to have to limit the number of rooms we're selling because we can't clean them. There are people mm -hmm. that are going through restaurants. We've already seen it in Hadley, where restaurants are reducing their hours, reducing, reducing their services as, as things are going on. And all your your to increase their burden going forward, whether it's ten percent, fifteen percent, whatever it is, it, it doesn't seem right to me. And I just don't understand. What, what what the urgency is to do this right now when we're still recovering and we're still and we're we have all these other headwinds that we're experiencing as we're moving to to the state of recovery this is just going to this is just going to extend the point that we're able to be sustainable and my last question is is that the state has billions of dollars of arpa money that's being sent to every single municipality in this state. What that money is, and if you read the legislation, that money is there to make you whole for any loss of commercial, commercial rents or commercial taxes that you're collecting. And so if you're using those funds other than what was intended, which was to go and help you with any deficiencies or that you haven't been collecting, then that's not right in my book, because that's the, what the money's intention was there for, for, and for other things. But primarily, that was there to make sure that the fiscal budgets of municipalities was where they were kept whole so that they can continue to offer the services 
and everything else without burdening the tax members. But what you're doing is you are burdening the commercial tax members unfairly just because you can. And the, the thought that if you know that your neighbor you know, can't experience a major loss and now you've decided that you've, you're gonna increase their burden just because you can, because you, you think that everybody is, they can, they, they can afford it. That's not, the, that's not the Hadley that I grew up with, that I, I'll tell you. That's very sad that I, I came to this country, my family came to this country, we made a life in this, in this town and we are blessed to be that we landed in this town. But this, is, this talk that what's going on here, that's not the way that we, we remember this place. And there needs to be some soul searching of who we really are because that, that's, you don't burden somebody who's experienced loss with more with, and by increasing that burden. So <clears throat> that's, that's kind of my statement. I'm, I'm you know, more than happy to explain to you the, the anguish, the, the anxiety that I experienced last year and to know that I'm recovering and to know that when I did, when I worked hard as I could to make sure all my tax payments were made, and now that you're going to increase them, when at the at the time where I probably need a little bit of a break and a little bit of breather, it just, it's just counterintuitive. I'm really sorry, but it's again, it's lacks of empathy and just an understanding of what the the burden it is for, especially for the small businesses that make up quite a bit of the the businesses that that are in Hadley. So. That is all. Shardul, what is your business? My family, own, we own three hotels in Hadley. Which we, hotel? We own the Hampton Inn, the Roadway Inn, which is closed, and then the Homewood Suites. Okay, thank you. And I'm also a resident. Um, as someone who's going through this for the second time with Finance Committee, only during times of COVID, could I get a little back history on the proposal of the split rates? Is this something that we typically do? I know we discussed it last year. Do we typically bring it up every year and, and discuss, or is this just a new pressure in the recent two years due to COVID? I'm just trying to get a full understanding of the historic. Well, as I understand it, we do, um, we do visit this question every year. And every year for all the almost seven years I've been on the finance committee, the answer has always been no, we're not going to do this. But this year, it seemed to make sense because the residential values have gone up and the commercial values have gone down. So the residential uh, percentage of the burden of taxes is, is going up. So um, this proposal was just to be a one-time thing, a one-year thing for this one time when you know the, the balance of, of property values have become skewed. Okay. Thank you, Valerie. Shardul, I have a question for you. You're also a resident, you said, and um, so you know that um, if we decide to um, keep the single tax rate, your residents will go up quite a bit. And um, that's something that um, I'm sure you will take on no problem. You'd rather see it go through the residents than your business. I mean, either way, I see that, unfortunately, you know, you're in a tough situation, you're getting hit. But um, if I was, if I'm thinking right, you would rather see it with on your home versus on your business, because on the home, you're going to take a lesser hit versus the business, you would take a higher hit. Am I correct? Oh, that's, that is correct. But I guess my my what I would like is for us to, to go and understand where other sources that we can use. Again, this there's significant ARPA money that's coming to all of these municipalities to to go and deal with this shortfall. I I don't think anybody should taxes should go up if we're getting all of this money from the state to go and and resolve many of these issues. So my feeling is, is that. Why, are, why haven't we identified other sources to combat this deficiency? 
Well, we can look at um, future, but some just I know on some of the ARPA money, just to tell you about a little bit of it, I know that we have um, the ARPA money is coming in and it is helping in um, with the shortfall of all your room tax, all the meals tax, all that income that we're losing on that. It's also coming in and we're um, it's being helpful to um, uh, so yes, it's, it's the rooms tax, but there was there was some others. Um, I don't think that we can take the ARPA money in lieu of the taxes. I mean, we did take it out of our stabilization, okay, um, to keep the tax rate low. So when the ARPA money came in, we put it back in the stabilization. So we we have kind of done that when we did the twelve twelve dollar uh, rate, but um, uh, so I, I, I mean, I, de I definitely think that we have been using it for those purposes. Um, whether or not we can do more, I mean, it is something we're um, going to be looking at how we're using the ARPA money. I know that Linda is working on it, and so isn't Susan. Well, there's also there's also expected to be another round of ARPA coming at the okay. beginning of the year. So there is. There is another, you know, there's this, but this current budget, but there's also the beginning of next year, the state has almost $5 billion that they're going to be distributing at the, at the beginning of next year. So that's, that, that's a, the, the state has like a two and a half, three, three billion dollar surplus. And I, I feel like we need to go and if there is such an issue and we're seeing these th issues, why aren't we going and pressing our political um, representatives to go and uh, to assist us with this. Why go and create a, in my opinion, an unfair tax to to people that the, the, to the commercial side, which has suffered the most during this. Meaning, I, I get it. My house is valued has gone up, and and everybody's houses has has gone up. But all the commercial, when I look at my, in terms of what the debt, the everything that we've had to take on to survive, meaning we're, our expenses are increasing. Our revenue is gonna get limited because of so many other issues. Now, Home Depot probably doesn't care, you know, and Whole Foods doesn't make, make an impact or Walmart or Target or whoever, but the Esalon, you know, Esalon Cafe, you know, he's limited right now in terms of all the things that he's able to do. All the restaurants, have had to do deal with all the extra expenses of COVID and outdoor dining and all of those other other things. I know the bike shop, they're they've gotten maybe less than half of the inventory that they requested that that uh, they wanted for this year. And their business has has started to, to slow down because of of shortages and and all these other things. So it, it's just uh, you know, I, I have friends in, in, in even the liquor store. I have friends in the liquor store business. They can't even get certain certain products. So you, you're, and these are all small businesses. These aren't these aren't the WalMarts that that probably have need to go and pay more or Home Depots or whoever the the, the Trader Joe's, the shopping shops, which are probably doing which did very very well last year, but. I, I don't see why my value should go up all of a sudden because uh, because of these uh, of this issue. Meaning, uh, I'm fine with them getting taxed more because they did better. They're making more money. That's fine. But why why tax the people that that lost money and are still suffering and continue to suffer probably into the this time next year? Mm -hmm. I saw Dan with his hand up for a little bit there. I just want to hear what he had to say to that before it gets lost. Yeah, I, I just want to say, I'll try to work backwards from, from Shardul's questions. Uh, the ARPA money, the money that's given out by the state, there's a disproportionate distribution of the ARPA money. If you look at Northampton, they are probably five or six times our size and they're receiving 20 or 30 times the amount of money that we get. The, the money that we got this year, we got about $770,000 in ARPA money. We, we could, could have used all of that for revenue replacement. We were down about a million dollars on our local receipts this year. The other distribution that's coming in is gonna be similar in size next year. And that is for the next four fiscal years. So there isn't a, a whole lot of money out there. 
it's it's not like Northampton that might be getting 15 or 18 or 20 million dollars. We're getting $750,000 on it. Uh, the point before that, the tax increase, you're looking at it as a tax increase. And we're looking at it as a reduction of the decrease. What you paid last year, your taxes are going to go down significantly for fiscal 22 from what you paid last year, even if the split rate is adopted. Uh, and the hospitality industry, again, if it doesn't recover during this fiscal year, which obviously this calendar year, which it obviously is not going to by the end of this year, it's still going to carry forward with with a lower value into 23. It, we're always we're we are a year behind what's actually taking place in valuation. So last year, last year's taxes were lowered for resident or kept constant for residential, and they were lowered by about six, a little more than six percent. And it should have probably been kept stable. If it was kept stable last year, we probably wouldn't be talking split rate this year because it would have been, it would have been a historic tax increase that we're looking at. The $408 that we're looking at is going to be the single highest tax increase for single family houses in the history of the town of Hadley. So Dan, I think you put it in your slides or somewhere, but that was a great point you brought up that we're a year behind. Could you speak to what repercussions we might be coming down the line from the decision of doing a split rate? Like what is gonna to happen to next year if we do do this? Is there, is there a pitfall we're not seeing? In the past, we've recommended keeping a single rate because one, once you adopt a single rate under normal circumstances, it's extremely difficult to shift back because then you're looking at again, what's happening this year with the residential the residential would, would skyrocket to bring the commercial down. What's actually happening this year is a majority of the commercial went down significantly, and it's really a short-term decrease in value. The sales that we've had during this year have indicated that a lot of the values have, have rebounded. People's Savings Bank just closed last week for 1.6 million. We had an automotive service center that sold for 1.6 million earlier in the year and another one that sold for 500,000. So the values for the most part are back. Uh, I think hotels, movie theaters, possibly gyms, bars, those might continue, those will most likely continue into fiscal 23 as well. But we're recommending doing a split rate only for this year. We think that next year at this point in time, the commercial values will catch back up to where they, they were or beyond. So oh, I, I have, thank you, Dan, for that. I, I, I have a comment I'd like to make. Um, and that is that, um, well, first of all, I, you know, I run a small business too. And I, I agree with Shardul that it's really hard to get people right now. And um, I, I, empathize with the the challenges he's had to deal with and has managed to hang on to um, to his businesses and survive to this far. Um, I, I wanted to say that, uh, you know, all of these years, the businesses on Route 9, the small businesses have kind of supported the homeowners in having a smaller tax bill. And we've all enjoyed that. We've all appreciated that for all these years, you know, that has been a benefit of living in Hadley. And it seems to me that this year, the commercial properties taking a hit like this, um, it, it just seems like to me, possibly we ought to consider the idea that maybe we Hadley uh, residents should support the commercial businesses who have had such a tough struggle so that they can make it to the end of this crisis that's not yet over. Uh, it just seems to me like, you know, they, they keep our taxes low all these years. Maybe it's time for us to help them out this one year so that they can make it to the following year and so that they can go back to supporting our low taxes. Um, you know, going forward. 
I, I just let me add this one other thing. And that is that I really, really appreciate the effort and thought that have gone in to how do we protect, you know, residents from having too great a, a rise in taxes. But it just seems to me that maybe this year is the year that we give a break to our 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 commercial owners so that they they can make it. Paul? Yeah, I, I totally agree with that last comment, uh, series of comments. And I'd like to say that I also think um, I don't think it's fair to say astronomical increases in the in the rate or the uh, if we don't do the split rate. Uh, Dan, it's I believe it's around four hundred dollars for the average house. Is the number? It's four hundred eight for the average. Okay, so four hundred dollars. I mean, four hundred eight, four hundred. It's very close, right? They had a freeze last year. Sorry, my bell clocks are going to go off. But um, you know, they had a freeze. We all had a freeze as homeowners last year. If you took look at this over a four or five year period, starting two years ago and going forward two more years we're all going to be basically averaged out at probably our normal increase rate, which is what, about 125, more or less? Uh, we're probably in the one, uh, for the average house, it's probably 125 to 150 Thank for you. an average year. All right. So for the homeowners, I think they have to look at this as though it's not that they're getting a huge increase this year. It's that over the five-year period, despite this new increase, they're right where they should be or right where we are normally at about $125 on the average house increase if we do nothing here, okay? And I totally agree with supporting the local businesses and even some of the national businesses that are in our community. They are, they are paying a huge amount of money to make our, keep our taxes down. And I feel, I, I just intrinsically feel that, you know, the whole reason they have valuations here is to barely tax people. And I think if you take the valuations and say, what if all the homeowners valuations drop dramatically because of a huge crisis in housing tomorrow, would we turn around and say, well, we're going to pass an extra tax on top to increase that? I mean, the homeowners in our community, as voters, we have just done a number of major capital projects that are affecting our tax rate. And yet, despite that, thanks to the commercial properties, you know, our rates are still lower than most communities around here. And also because of the fiscal management that I think our board, our select board have done, our treasurer, um, Dan, uh, you know, I applaud everybody who's been involved in that. We've had uh, people come into our meetings from different departments who have been, you know, they had a lot of things they wanted to get, but they pulled back and said, okay, we can live with just this. And this is our workaround. You know, police department found a way to lease a vehicle rather than do a capital. Um, the school department uh, really pulled in on its expenses and returned money. I mean, I think they've, everybody's been working towards this, but I, and yes, uh, maybe we're a year behind here, but in a year we catch up with these rates. And I think that, I think the select board needs to basically uh, explain to everybody that although it seems like a massive increase, again, sorry for the clock spells, the ship spells, but um, that we, you know, we, we have a, a multi-year average here. It's no different. It just means the last year you didn't have to pay it. Now you're paying it back. Okay, and I think that's not an unfair uh, way to couch this, and and I think that's what we ought to do. Thank you. Dan, can I just I, I hear both those points. I feel like Dan said earlier though that the rate will increase, but the assessed value will go down, and so the break won't be at the overall bill at the end of the day. Is that a, is that correct, Dan, or did I misunderstand that? For the, for the commercial values, a lot of them went down five or 10 percent. The, the industries that were hit the hardest went down significantly more. So you're looking at a, a sharp decrease for hospitality, hotels, restaurants, bars. Uh, unfortunately, Hampshire Mall, who had a lot of closures, the gym was closed for a long time. The movie theaters were closed. The restaurants were closed. They, they're taking a big drop. So the, the companies, the commercial areas that got hit the hardest during COVID saw their assessed value decrease. And you're saying that with a split tax rate, even with that higher rate, with their lower assessed value, their overall bill 
is that going to be about equal or lower or it's I'll, dependent? I'll give one example, and I'm not going to say names, but you can probably figure out who it is. In fiscal 20, their bill was $296,000. Last year, it was two seventy eight. It went down to eighteen. This year, with the single rate, they'll go down to two eighteen. dollars So that's a, they're, they're down almost $80,000. Oh. If they split the rate and go with the 7%, which we didn't make a recommendation, but my board was leaning towards the seven, they would be around 234, 235. So they're still gonna see a drop this year from 278 to 235. Oh. Some of the smaller businesses might see slight increases in their tax bill, commercial and industrial. See, I think I'm split here because like I, yeah. I'm hearing that and I feel like doing a split would make sense, but then I'm also hearing Paul's argument uh, that the homeowners of Hadley have been given uh, benefits in the past and that we should be keeping up with that. And that if the assessed values of homes are going up, that's probably a, that's a larger problem for a different committee uh, to focus on housing production. But. Shardul? Uh, a couple of things, Dan, uh, thanks for the explanation. Um, you know, I, and th that makes, a lot of sense. I, I, I guess the question, couple of questions is that what is our, what is our projected shortfall? And the question, the other question is if we're getting, I, I feel like we're not, why aren't we going and engaging our political representatives to go, if, if Northampton is getting that much factor, more money than we are for this ARPA money? Why aren't we at least trying to level that playing field in terms of getting that money? Why, I guess, what attempts have we made to get that money? Because it seems like it, it's seems like it's grossly unfair that we're if we're our deficiency is is something in, in the in the realm of ten percent or less of what they're getting, and they're getting thirty times what we're getting. It just seems like why aren't we chasing in the next fiscal, whatever, uh, the next budget or the next round that they are um, allocating these funds, what are we doing to, to go and shore up these finances so that nobody has to see any increase, whether it's a residential or commercial? It, it just, that, that's, really my, you know, that's really my question. I feel like there's an opportunity there that we can, we can go as residents and as a town, go and push our elected representatives to go and, and, and help us with that. Uh, Paul, I know you had a question. I don't yeah. know if you want to answer Shardul's first or not. Yeah, I, but. I, I, let me just go back. Uh, and I hear what you're saying. If we, if we adjust it, that they're still going to get a decrease. But in theory, they're supposed to get the whole decrease. I mean, in fairness, if we were on a level playing field here of a single rate, those rates were supposed to drop to 218, not 230. Okay. And isn't that what they're due? And isn't that what all the other businesses that are going to see a less of a decrease, if that's how you want to couch it, less of a decrease by doing this. And, um, you know, again, I, I just feel like it's like we're, they're supposed to get this and then we're going to take it away at some level, either completely or partly. And that's what I have a concern with. And just to quickly comment on that, the, that I agree with that, but also last year they saw seven percent or six to seven percent decrease that wasn't warranted. Last year, our businesses in our community and continuing this year have experienced an unthinkable event. No one has lived through this like this, except the Great Depression, perhaps. What they're going through, right? But but I mean, to, I, I, to I, look I, at I, it car dealers who can't get cars. Look across the street from my office. There's a parking lot that used to be packed and there's nothing there right now. In fact, they had, they towed a couple cars that had an accident here and had a couple cruisers and fire trucks in there because there's plenty of room to deal with the accident. But the problem is, is that our values and our taxes are always 12 months behind. So right. this is the first time that you would actually be seeing an impact of COVID in the real estate tax bills. Last right. year, the average value went, or the average tax bill went down about 6% because the rate dropped 78 cents. 
I get that, but does but doesn't the same apply to our homeowners, including myself, who last year were a year behind? We did not pay last year's increase. Um, Are we catching up with that? The average bill, the average bill last year for the residential was held constant. This year it's going to go. This and the commercial went down seven. Dan, if it because it was due to go down because of what happened, the homeowners not didn't just hold constant; they didn't get an increase. I don't think that's a fair way to characterize this. We did not see the normal increase we would have had last year had we not voted to freeze things. And when we did that, and I believe that was at the firehouse, is that yep. the, we mm -hmm. told everybody, be prepared next year. We have to make up for this. But we were trying to help people who were stuck at home, who some of them were laid off from jobs and, and to help everybody out. But I think it's unfair to characterize it as though the as though the commercial was a year behind, and not and then to say that the homeowners aren't a year behind as well. We all got a break last year, myself included. Play devil's advocate, though. Commercial commercial had the access to PPP loans, while personal residences didn't necessarily. Not that all we're going to get it or whatnot. I'm not trying to make it. First of all, not all businesses got PPP loans or were eligible, and second of all, in order to use them and get them, they could get the loan. But in order to have it forgiven as aid, they had to spend all the money out. And in the first round, they were all told they had eight weeks to spend it. And after a lot of businesses honestly worked at employing people who could not be there to do productive work and increase their sales and make profit, they then found out they just spent the money for nothing because down the road, you could have, they, they changed it to what, 24 months or something, 24, yeah. You could and and, and that's what, and, and all of our, all, all of our PPP was used for salaries. Right. And that's not, not my salary. Not right. none of them, I don't receive a penny from any of the, you know, any of the Hadley properties. My salary is based in Springfield, um, but we used all of the money PPP one and two for our employee's salary. And as Paul said, the first round, I had people doing nothing. But I kept them because all the other unemployment hadn't started, all these other things. But I told my, I, I wanted to make, make sure they were taken care of while, while this was happening. Because everybody thought come May or June, things will be, not me, but everybody else thought that come May or June, things will go back to normal. But we did exactly what Paul said. We, we did do that. Now, I'm not saying everybody is as nice or as, my family was, but I, I'm just explaining to you as a person on this on this uh, meeting that I did exactly what Paul did said. And the other thing is that everybody, on the other hand, residents, including myself, and including you know, depending on your income, you also got a lot of stimulus money, thousands of thousands and thousands of dollars, and we're and anybody who has a child is also receiving uh, hundreds if hundreds of dollars every month because of, of that. So at the end of the day, I'm just gonna tell you what I lost last year, nothing that the government did helped me get whole. Mm -hmm. I've, I've only, even, even in, into this year, I've, I've only become even because thank God business returned, but nothing that the, 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 the government did last year made me uh, a whole at all. Our revenues, at all of our hotels, we went down 75, 80%. My, my, I, don't, I don't think my taxes are going down 75, 80%. So I just wanna make sure everybody has that, takes that in perspective is that, and we've taken down millions of dollars of loans. I've, I've talked to Congressman Neal, explained to them, it's gonna take me, my family 10 years just to get whole to where I was back in 19. So, it, and, as Paul mentioned, this is continuing. We can we we couldn't get sheets <laughs> this year. We were, we were we couldn't get sheets for our rooms. We couldn't get food for our breakfast. It was, well, it, it was, and we're still seeing the headwinds for. I Meaning, we're we're still we're still experiencing headwinds going. And the labor issue is, I think that's just going to get worse. I don't think it's getting any better. That's for sure. Um, but. Um, Anyway, uh, Linda, you had your hand up for a little bit. Did you want to say something? 
Oh, yes. Um, we're here to provide information and um, it's, it's hard to get in and correct things as they go by. Um, I just have a few things, points I want to make then. Um, when talking about how the residents got a break by having their tax rate held even last year at the firehouse, that goes, that ha applied to commercial as well. That, that's what a single rate does. It's not just the residents got a break then. The residents got a break and the commercial got more of a break. And, and that's how it is. Second thing I wanna correct is about ARPA. It has nothing to do with uh, compensating for real estate taxes. And we don't have an issue with real estate taxes. ARPA is about compensating for our other uh, local receipts income, which is where we applied it to. We don't have billions of dollars that we're spending on other things. And ARPA is, and it's not about, um, we're not trying to make up for a shortfall with and talking about how the uh, going to single rate or double rate. The town's raising exactly the same amount of tax dollars either way. We are not looking for where are we going to get the money from? Oh, how about we raise taxes on business? It's not like that. We have a pool of money that we are raising in taxes for FY22, FY23, no matter whether it's double rate or tax rate uh, or a double rate or, uh, or single rate. The only question is who's, going to, who's, is who's going to pay it and what is the, what is the proportionment? And there's always been a certain proportionment between residential and commercial, which was thrown off this past year. Um, I understand all the merits, all the equity of why uh, it was, uh, you know, of, of why we want to give commercial even more of a break. But what we're not hearing from in any of these is you're not hearing residents coming on and saying what their problems have been in the past couple of years. And they've been huge too. There have been mm. people laid off. There's been residents who work for these businesses who have not been able to have a job or have not been working and they've been home. And they live in our homes in Hadley. That's something to consider as well. Mm. Just because they're residents doesn't mean that they're continuing along like some of us are with the same salary we had the year before. Some of us are more fortunate than others. Some of us are, some of those who live in our houses here are small business owners which really um, maybe don't even own property running businesses out of their house. And they had a, a, a great fall in income. And now you're raising their, now they will have to pay a larger proportion of, um, of the real estate taxes. So um, that's pretty much it. I, I just, you know, it's been brought up several times that this is a shortfall. And I just want you to understand Shardell, we're not looking to where can we get more money from? It's not like that. It's the same pool of money. It's the same income we've been projecting all year of what we're going to be raising for FY22. It's just the proportionate between the two. It honestly makes for our financial planning differences, makes no difference at all, whether it's a single or double rate. Mm -hmm. um, the, only, the only thing is, is who's it's going to impact and um, how this is going to compare to how taxes have been paid in the past. And um, and whether uh, you know, and whether you know, whether it's it's fair. Uh, so, and that's that's for you as long as you have correct information. Well, if the commercial receipts go down, doesn't that mean you're 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 receiving less money? If the commercial, if the taxes and the and the meals tax and the occupancy tax and the property taxes of the commercial side are reduced, then you are receiving less money. We're not going to receive less real estate taxes. The 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 meals and the rooms taxes are, are they're different. They're distributions we receive from the state, and you pay those taxes to the state, and we get those back. We are offsetting those losses, which we have experienced quite a bit of losses there. We are offsetting offsetting those losses with um, uh, ARPA. So we have been made not exactly whole, as as Dan said, we could have used the whole thing. We actually specifically did not use all of the ARPA receipts for um, for uh, um, out of ARPA because we wanted to save some to use for other purposes. Um, we have to budget our ARPA in, in, in ways perhaps uh, that it doesn't seem fair um, compared to the way other cities and towns have received money. Um, I know I keep hearing about all this money too, like you, like there's billions of dollars in ARPA. I know how much we receive and that's what we're dealing with. We, we are, our amount is one and a half million dollars over two years. And we have spent this year's and next year, probably with uh, offset for your, um, for the meals 
and rooms tax. Um, although we did see quite an increase in the rooms tax in this last quarter we got. So we, we really are seeing signs that the rooms are, are coming back, not to the prior levels, but they are definitely coming back. This last quarter was way better than what anything we saw all of last year. So we're seeing improvement and I hope you are too. <laughs> Look, I'm not, and I, like I said, we're we're definitely seeing improvement. But the first half of the year was was still was struck. We struggled, and then we had all of the shortages of everything. It seemed like, but the question is, is that if the meals and occupancy taxes are reduced, and then the commercial property property taxes are reduced, aren't you collecting less money then? The the Sorry, I'm, I'm be, uh, sorry, I'm asking these questions. I'm just trying to understand for myself. Well, yeah. meals, I'm just looking at the pool yeah, let, of money. Let Dan, Dan can answer that. The meals and the motel excise tax, if that goes down, that goes down and we've got less money. We use sure. the ARPA money that we came in, that came in to subsidize that, to bring it up. If the commercial tax revenue goes down, all that money that's being saved or that commercial is paying less is transferred over to the residential property tax. So Pro residents protection. would pay more. But that's for, that, that's a for, that's a forward looking, right? That's not. No, that's this year. That's this year. This year, yeah. There's about four hundred thousand dollars in revenue that was paid, probably three seventy five that was paid by commercial last year. That this year will be made up by the the residential going up by that and, amount. And and there's so and we can't use alternative sources other than tax real estate taxes. To, taxes to, are. It, Taxes are controlled by the state. We can't use ARPA to substitute for that. I wish what's we could. Con what's controlled by the state? Uh, real estate taxes under Prop two and a half. Everything is, is controlled by the state. How much we can raise, our levy limit, our tax but, rates, everything. But Amy also said we can take money from the stabilization fund, but then we can use our ARPA money to go and rebuild the stabilization fund. Uh, no, ARPA is specifically one of the, the big major no-nos with ARPA monies. It cannot be used as a, put into a savings account. It can't be used for, ARPA can't be used for stabilization. It can't go in to pay OPEB, which is other post-employment benefits. It can't be used as savings. It has to be spent. So we were able to supplement in a roundabout way. We supplemented the budget with ARPA money this year and took the free cash that would have gone into the budget and put that back into the stabilization fund. Okay. So we, so the next, I guess the next, as long as the source isn't ARPA, could we use this money to, to shore up the tax receipts? So let's say the state has a, you know, whatever, a billion and a half, $2 billion surplus that they're trying to figure out what to do with. Can we go and again engage our leg legislation and explain to them the the issues and the the wind the you know the headwinds the issues that we've had because of this commercial base and what it's done to us? Can we go and engage them to help us fulfill this this whatever I don't know what you whatever you call it but this this uh, real estate tax balancing act. No, is the answer. No, okay. you cannot use ARPA funds to offset real estate taxes. No, no, I'm not talking about ARPA. I'm talking about outside of ARPA. The state state has funds that are that are in excess that are outside of ARPA. They have funds that are budget surplus that they're looking to use the money for. Are, can we go and engage the state and through our legislation to get some of that money? You possibly could, but I think it would, I'm not saying it would be a waste of time, but it, it probably would be. Politicians tend to go where the votes are. That's why Northampton and Springfield and Hoyoke and Westfield and Chicopee got astronomical ARPA money and we got what we got. And, and if we were to ask for that money, how much would it be? I don't think they'd give us any. No, I'm just saying, what's the, the ballpark, the amount of money that we would need to go and say everybody's... To, to go and deal with these issues? I don't know, but the problem is, like I, I talked to Paul last week, and if we use money to, to lower the real estate taxes, that's across the board reduction. 
Well, so <laughs> residential would drop, commercial would drop even more. I'm not saying that that commercial doesn't deserve to drop more, but there's a disparity. It's about a 20% swing in taxes between two years ago and this year, residential versus commercial. What is that? What is that? What is that number in terms of dollars? Uh, right now, it's about a million and a quarter. Okay. And to put it in perspective, last year that number was five hundred thousand. Next year, that would then turn into probably two point five. So it's a never-ending spiraling up mm -hmm. number that would increase. Thank you. Okay. So I think um, unless anybody else has some um, thing to say, I think what we should do is probably go um, around if anybody has one last comment or if you want to, um, we could probably put a vote and then this will be our recommendation to the select board um, <coughs> for next Wednesday, the 17th. I will post for that meeting and then everybody, if you could please show up on Wednesday, the 17th um, with, and so the select board will decide on what to do. Um, I'm going to, uh, I will start. I, I understand both sides of it very much. The last thing I want is my taxes to go up, but um, in this particular case, you know, I'm willing to pay the extra money I know not everybody can, but I, I just feel like I can't, I can't support the split tax rate. The reasons of me not supporting a split tax rate would be, you know, with businesses, if you, um, the, the more you decrease the taxes, the less tax burden a business has, the more opportunity they have to grow. I went to um, Kittery um, for shopping. It was terrible. There was most of the store, a lot of the stores were gone. We were missing, um, there was not much for sales. You know, it's it's the businesses are hitting, getting hit hard during these times. And if their their values are down, there's a reason for their values being down. I think that I'm willing, you know, I'd like to, I just don't feel good about inflating the value, you know changing the rate, splitting it so that we bring the rate back and making them pay a little bit more, even though it's gonna be less, they're down because they needed it. And I wanna encourage the businesses and my, I mean, they're our bread and butter. They're the reason why our rates, you know, what we pay in taxes is what we pay in taxes. They're the reason why this town is where it is. I wanna encourage the businesses. And so for me, I am going to, um, I, I just can't go with the split tax rate. The other two items are, it's really hard to go back. It's been said over and over and over again, it is hard to go back to a single tax rate afterwards. And the last thing is, you know, I know that over every year it's been said, if we do a split tax rate, the abatement we're gonna get hit with on some of these stores is gonna be a lot. Now I know Dan says we're gonna get hit with them anyways, because he, he predicts that. I do feel like we're going to get hit even harder if we do if we do the split tax rate. Um, so for those reasons, I'm going to um, still side with the single tax rate. Um, if we can just quickly go around and then we'll do a vote. Can I ask Dan one more question? So a quick one. Is this the first year that the board has recommended adopting a split tax rate? This is the only year in the last 31 that I've been here that the board has recommended a split rate. And it's mostly due to, and don't take this the wrong way, the, the value decrease is artificial in nature. It's not a market driven, it's not that properties aren't selling, it's, because, it's strictly because of COVID-19 and places were closed. These values are gonna come back, most of the values will be back at the level or higher next year. So, sorry, Linda, go, go ahead. Oh, no, I actually, I, was, I, I agree with what uh, Dan and I actually were both here in the um, mid eighties. And um, I was on finance committee at that time and, and assessors every single year, everyone, finance, select board, assessors were against split rates. 
many new um, officials when they come on board, school committee member, they're looking for more money and uh, many new finance committee members. Why don't we have a split rate? So we discussed this over and over again over the years. It does not raise more in taxes and, um, and we are a, a community that supports our businesses. And this is just the way it is in Hadley because we have so many businesses. Um, and I just do want to, uh, I mean, Amy, you did say um, once you go split rate, it's hard to go back. And I just need to say, no, it isn't. We have this discussion next year and we go back to the single rate. It's, it's, just, that, it's just that easy. It's a vote we take every single year. Um, when you get entrenched in it, you want to change it in 10 years, that's a different story. But the reason we're doing this is to even things out and keep the fluctuation between the two. And um, it's it's not hard to go back after one year. I don't know if you disagree with that, Dan, but I, I, I because you did say earlier that it's hard to go back, but I, you didn't mean after one year, I don't think. It's difficult one, when you adopt it under normal situations, it is difficult to go back to a split rate, but these are not normal situations. The values went down by over about 10% this year for commercial. Next year, we anticipate the values going up significantly. So the, the, percentages will will rebound so we can go back and residential would drop slightly commercial will go back up i just want to add that northampton held their hearing last week and there's an article in i believe it's today's gazette and northampton went down about two percent on their commercial values which is i think really low but they only went down about two percent overall we've gone down about ten percent so that's a big drop compared to Northampton. They went from 19.3% of their levy being commercial, industrial, and personal to 18.8, which is really not a big drop. So um, context as a renter in Hadley, not a homeowner in Hadley, and a small business owner, albeit in Amherst, not in Hadley, uh, just for context. I think I'm going to support the split tax rate. And I think I agree with Linda, actually. I don't think that opening up this option is necessarily hard to go back. It's just that it's a precedent that hasn't been done before. And we're, we're setting this precedent in a time that, like Dan mentioned, is an uh, unusual time. Uh, it's not like we're pulling this out in a normal year. Um, the reason why I'm for supporting the split tax rate, other than the recommendation from the board and the good points from Linda and Dan, uh, is that while the rate might increase the overall value to those businesses when they have a lower assessed rate, is their, their overall tax bill is not going to be tied directly to that percentage for a full increase because their assessment is lower. Um, I just... I don't know, I think the split tax rate is the way to go right now, um, specifically because we usually see these assessed values stay together. This year, COVID created some weird anomaly. We saw a lot of people leave cities, come to places like Hadley, rural living and drive up homes and their assessed values. While well, we saw University of Massachusetts that supports a lot of our Route 9 not have students in session here. Um, I just, I think it's a, a one-time thing with a weird, uh, impact on the assessed values of homes and commercial. And I think split tax rate is the, is the best way to solve this for this year. And so I would support it. I'm going to support it. Paul or Val, do you have any last comments before we uh, put a vote in? Well, uh, I would say that um, I feel so much sympathy for all of the uh, business owners who have lost so much uh, income, but also uh, I, I feel like my sympathies are live in general with business owners because I know we're never going to recoup all the losses from that year and a half. We're never going to get that back. And um, we're all kind of in the same boat that way. And um, so while I feel sympathy for the boat that we're all in, I, I, I have to say, uh, 
I, I agree with uh, Dylan about how, because the rate is, I mean, the, um, the values are so much lower, the rate being higher still don't bring them up to what they were uh, before. So um, it's still a benefit to the businesses to, um, the, there's still going to be a lower tax paid for this past year. But it's a hard decision. It's a very hard decision. And I really appreciate all the work and energy that Dan has put into it and Linda about figuring out how, what's the best approach for our town. And, it, you know, I'm kind of like 50-50, but I end a little bit uh, on the side of going ahead and doing the, 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 the split tax. Paul? You know, that pull that you're feeling is exactly the reason why once you do this, it's going to be very hard to undo it. And I, I really, I do not believe once we get the split rate that in future years, we are not going to be pushed in order to keep the overall tax rate down to just keep somehow move it over to the uh, businesses and especially when the businesses are recovered, if that ever happens. We don't know what's coming down the pike for businesses. Um, you know, unfortunately, you know, it's easy to say that they're coming out of this right now or it didn't have an impact or you've seen some sales that indicate that it's come back. You've seen a couple of very specific sales at very specific locations. But I think if you go and talk to businesses that uh, wanted to borrow money that wasn't having federal, uh, federal support for it, um, a lot of banks and a lot of financiers are not running to invest in restaurants. They're not running to invest in new hotels. They're not running to invest in new business uh, uh, parks either. Um, and that is the legacy that we're going to be living with. And these businesses that are in that, I included, own office property, but I also own building lots and a house. So I'm going to get hit one way or the other from this. But I feel that we are going to have this gravitational pull to say, well, it's not going to affect the businesses that much. They're still going to see a reduction. And it's going to be salami tactics of a slice by slice to shift this over to go to split rate permanently at some point. And I think it's a bad precedent. And I think it's really unfair to the businesses right now, especially when you look at the five-year average for homeowners, there's no change at all. And, and that's how I feel about this. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I, I feel that you ought to think very hard about that. Um, and again, you know, we're just, we're an advisory body. You know, what, what the elected officials who are the select board are going to do um, is not really anything that we can do more than try and influence them. We have no, uh, we don't, we vote for this or against it. It's gonna be the select board that's ultimately gonna make this decision. Uh, it's out of really out of our hands, but I feel we should send a strong message. I, I, I have one more, just one more last comment. I feel that sometimes when we're talking dollars and he's saying the average tax uh, uh, resident will be $400. And then he's talking about that's $400 versus a um, $80,000 on that commercial. That's, I mean, that's huge difference in dollars. Now with the, with the residential, we spread it over a lot of different residents. We have more residents to spread it over. So the impact is less on the residents mm -hmm. versus impact on the commercial because there's less of commercial. And two, it's on the, it's on the average, um, house which is the 300 and something thousand there's a lot of houses that are under that and in, in the assessed value right now is much lower um that than right now than what we're seeing in the uh, sales so that inflation of the sales i don't think is caught up with the assessed value yet so we're still talking about the lower amount um i just feel like yes those large large houses are going to have to pay more um, but the smaller ones, the new, the older, smaller houses won't be as affected as the bigger brand new houses. Um, but the businesses, because there's less of the businesses and their value in their, where their value is, it's a significant amount in dollars. I right. feel like it's also proportional to 
the asset of a house and the business and the business's assets, and also the income of a person and individual, and also that business's individual. So uh, this is the tricky thing about having variable numbers and fixed numbers is you can, it's a, you can forever slice it and dice it in a million ways uh, to serve your, your position and to distract. And I just, I don't, I don't know. I don't fully agree. No, I, I just want to say it's not proportional because if my revenue decreased by 80% and my taxes stayed the same, then, then my, my taxes went up four times in yeah. reference or in relative to my income. And I have empathy so, for so, small. So that, and that's not what's happening for people's, people's income didn't go down 80% last year. Neither did it go down 80% this year. And by increasing it $400, and if an average house is getting, is getting let's say, average income is probably $60,000, $70,000, that income, that in terms of their income, their taxes increase, it's not, the, it's not proportional. I'm paying significantly, I paid significantly more taxes as part of my revenue last year than, than I did in the year before, four times more, because I paid the, the, the taxes last year. My taxes aren't going down by one four. They're not going down by 80%. They're going down by 10, 15%. So it's still a factor significantly re, in terms of the proportion. It, it's, there's, no, there's no saying that that's the same proportion because it isn't. It's not even close. What I think I'm, we're also getting into a, a phase here of getting into anecdotal and hypotheticals, and I feel like it's probably not helpful to our, our vote. It's, I don't think it's hypothetical. Uh, I think Dan, Dan pretty much verified that in terms of the occupancy tax and meals taxing receipts that he received last year, you can, you can go and pretty quickly extrapolate exactly how much of a decrease that he saw. The movie theater was closed for 12 months you can pretty much assume that there was zero income coming to that movie theater. And if my, I know what my hotel is, I have a closed hotel. I know I, my, my income right now is not what it was in the same as in 2019. So it's nothing's anecdotal. It's, it's, these are all things that we can easily extrapolate from the data that we've been, we've been provided. Should we vote? Oh, yes, I think that would be uh, good. So um, I guess um, if someone wants to make a motion. I'll make a motion that we um, uh, that we oppose a um, a uh, split rate in the uh, tax rate in the town of Hadley. So okay. vote yes is, is to oppose it, and a vote no would be to support a split rate, correct? So a, say yeah, that again. I, I think the way I've worded that is that if you vote in favor of what I've just proposed, you're voting against a split tax rate. If you vote against it, then you're voting that you prefer a split tax rate. Yes? Yeah. Okay, so I second that. So um, why don't we uh, go around and... Um, and, and put our vote in, okay? So I would like to do it one at a time. Um, so I vote yes, um, I vote for a single tax rate. Paul? Yes, for a single tax for rate. Single tax rate. Dylan? I'll vote no for the split tax rate. Okay, and Valerie? This is so hard. I am exactly 50-50 on this issue and I just don't know whether I should abstain or, um, but, but the one thing I do know is that Alexi, who cannot be here, is very adamantly against splitting the tax rate. Um, so I think what makes sense is, to, is for me to, to, to vote against splitting the tax rate too. Okay. So, um, well, I, um, like I said, I recommend we will, so the vote is uh, uh, three, one, am I correct? 
yes. three one. Yeah. Uh, we will then present to the that will be presented to the select board, and I um, encourage us all to speak, not just to say it's a three one that we all speak up and tell them what we think. Okay, so, I mean, just you can just be br very, very brief, but I think that they just need to know um, Dylan's thoughts, your thoughts, everybody's thoughts. Okay. And so what time is, is that at? Because I think I probably have a I have a seven o'clock thing, so I don't want to. Is it six thirty or five thirty? It's not posted yet, but I think it's six o'clock. Okay, great. I should be able to get my voice in before I have to leave for seven. Okay. Um, I, I I would like to say this. I I am so grateful to Dan's efforts and to Linda's and everybody who has been studying this problem and working on it and trying to decide what is the best thing for our town. I know it's not an easy thing. And um, I, I just, um, I, I really appreciate how hard you guys work to make, to, to make the best choices for our town. I agree with that, Val. I agree. And I do think if there's a year for it, this would be the year for it. I do understand where they're coming from. I completely get that. Mm -hmm. I just, I just can't, I, I don't know. I just can't get behind it. I've always been against the split tax rate. And it's one of those things that's hard to change. Um, and I just can't get behind it. But I do completely understand. And I appreciate where, what they're saying. So. Right. You know, motion to adjourn. Second, please. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.